Welcome back to Post Wrestling, and I know a lot of our viewers and listeners are going to have the Iron Claw as part of their viewing plans this coming weekend, and it's a treat to be joined by the writer and director of the film, Sean Durkin, who is here with us. And Sean, on the eve of the release, uh, can you tell me a bit about uh, your headspace at this point? I'm sure that this part of the process comes with a certain level of nervous energy as you let this project out to the masses. Yeah, I think uh, at this point, I'm so tired that I'm not really thinking about yeah. much, <laughs> um, except trying not to lose my voice uh, and uh, spending more time with my kids. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm just I'm just excited. Um, it's been uh, over eight years now in the making and um, obviously to you know, have made this movie as a lifelong dream come true and to get it out in the way we're getting it out is, you know, a filmmaker's dream come true. So yeah, it's been a very beautiful, beautiful experience and uh, yeah, happy to, happy to be here. When you take us back to eight years ago and you're pitching this, this idea and trying to bring it to life, what um, obstacles did you encounter along the way and being that the backdrop is professional wrestling, did that help? Did that hinder? What role did that play? Because it's a unique industry that sometimes comes with its preconceived notions to those that don't pay attention to the pro wrestling industry. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I I think, you know, at, at first I got really lucky because my producing partner who really, you know, she was starting a new company and we met and... I had just been thinking about them again. And she was like, if you could do anything, what would it be? I was like, well, anything. <laughs> I was like, Von Erichs and told her the story. And, and, and she was so encouraging. And I think without that early encouragement, I might've talked myself out, out of it for all of those, you know, tricky reasons of why it would be hard to make this. But I also was so passionate about it and she could see that. And, um, and I think, you know, ultimately as a filmmaker, if you're, passionate about something chances are other people are too and if you just use that as your focus because there's so many things to worry about there's so many things that could go wrong there's so many obstacles to overcome that if you think too much about any of them or think about them in the macro too much like it it's just too much it's too overwhelming and so really just try to focus along the way like one step at a time and uh, deal with the problem that's directly ahead of you and and not much else when you see the the runtime of this film, that's around two hours and 20 minutes. How quickly does that two hours and 20 minutes fill up for you, especially when we're talking about a story like the Von Erichs that is so complex, it is so tragic, and it's it, certainly you're you're balancing like staying true to the story while also realizing that you are trying to fit it into this manageable length. I mean, it's even less. It's like, 211 with credits so it's only only like two hours and five minutes a movie so it's uh, it's even yeah. it's even harder um it was a huge undertaking i the first thing i did was a lot of research to sort through and find the facts of the family and build a reliable timeline of their story and what you're looking at is just this epic greek tragedy and, uh, you know, set in Texas and focusing on a wrestling dynasty. So it's immediately a, just a really exciting prospect, but it's so huge. It's never going to fit in a movie. And look, you always know that as a filmmaker, no, no biopic has ever fully showed the life of one person, never mind a family like this. So you're never going to really be able to do that. So you have to make a choice of like, what's the core of this? What's the core I'm interested in telling? And I know there's five other versions of this. I know, you know, like, but really Kevin and Kevin's story of survival um, and, and this notion of him, what did he have to do to sort of break the curse in order to move forward and survive? And that was a really exciting prospect. And just Kevin, and the way he speaks so openly and how sort of clear he is about his emotions and the bad times and the good times. He's, he was really like a, a guiding light for finding it. And I think the heart that he has and the, um, and so sort of how loving of a guy he is really is the thing that saved him. And that was really exciting for me to discover. I wanted to sort of get your perspective researching this as much as you have. It does include um, the death of, Technically, the oldest son, uh, Jackie Jr., who, 
you know, preceded all of the other Von Erichs when he was electrocuted at a very young age. And I'm curious to know your idea of how much that sort of impacted Fritz Von Erich and who I, th- I think will we'll come across as a very callous figure in this film. But you do have this backdrop of someone that experienced tragedy very early in his parenthood. Yeah, I I think um, I mean it it must have must have altered his life forever. I mean, losing a seven year old or six year old, I can't remember exactly now how old he was, but I mean it's just unthinkable. And um, you know, in some ways, I I don't think anyone recovers from that. Um, you know, there was this notion that came about um, that after that maybe. Fritz and Doris held on too tight mm-hmm. and um, in ways where maybe not emotionally, but sort of physically. Uh, but I don't know, you know, I, I think that Fritz very much was defined by the sort of the place he came from and the, you know, ideas of what a man were and how a man could survive and, 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 you know, these outdated notions that are very harmful, but I, I, you know, I, I don't know if, you know, had Jackie not died, if things would have been different. I mean, it definitely changed them emotionally because it can't not, but I, I don't know. I don't know if it was it really down to that. I think, um, these, uh, yeah, these, these things were also like how he was going to raise his sons were, were already there. And it wasn't just him. It was, it was very much the culture at the time. Um, so I don't, I don't know how different that would have been. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think it's going to open up a, a lot of discussion into, you know, the perspectives of all the different uh, family members. And I just want to say congratulations on the film and all of the best with the, uh, the release coming up. And I'm certain that you are going to get, um, lots of of attention on a a truly tragic story but one i think a lot of people are happy to be seeing uh on such a large platform thank you thank you very much